Years ago, weary travelers crossed this very desert on horseback. Since then, times have changed. Five, four, three, two, one, start. Zero to 135 miles an hour in 1.9 seconds. On May 11, 2016, Hyperloop One conducted the first test of an electric motor for a new mode of transportation. After boats, trains, cars, and planes. Before we know it, we may soon get around town like this, or something close to it. The bush was south of men. And it's all because of an idea from visionary entrepreneur Elon Musk. Back in 2013, he announced a radical transportation concept. It came to him after being stuck in LA traffic. I have a name for it, name for it which is called the Hyperloop. He's a little bit busy running Tesla and SpaceX. So Elon open-sourced his concept and invited anybody to take the challenge. Two companies did, and both happened to be in Los Angeles, one in Culver City and the other in downtown. The one in downtown is called Hyperloop One, and the first test of their electric motor was a resounding success. Welcome to Hyperloop. Ron, thank you for having nice me. Nice to have you here. I've got lots to show you today. And uh, why don't we start in here in our test and development center. Rob Lloyd is CEO, former president of the global tech company Cisco Systems. He helped build the internet. That's amazing. That is absolutely amazing. What is Hyperloop? Hyperloop is the next mode of transportation. It's a very simple construct. Start with a tube. We remove a lot of pressure from that tube. So any object moving through it has much less resistance. Then take a pod that could contain cargo, that could have people, and put it inside that tube. Use an electric motor to propel it, levitate it using magnets, and as a result of those combination of factors, you can go really fast. How fast? Hyperloop's top speed will be 750 miles per hour, just below the sound barrier. Imagine, that means you'll be able to travel from Los Angeles to San Francisco in 30 minutes. But first, they had to prove the concept. So Hyperloop One built a test track in the middle of the Nevada desert. The next step is even more critical. In the next six months, we'll be completing the construction of the full Hyperloop system. Low pressure environment, magnetic levitation, pod design. So we will demonstrate the full system in December this year. They have a word for this moment. We call that our Kitty Hawk moment, the time that Hyperloop takes flight. Just like the Wright brothers, Hyperloop One knows people have to see it to believe it. Wondering how all this is possible? Hyperloop is based on existing science. We're actually taking existing science, existing technology, building a new system, all working together with those key components. In fact, pneumatic tubes first emerged in the 1850s as a way to deliver mail. The operators called themselves rocketeers. Then in 1870, an inventor and the publisher of Scientific American built an experimental air-driven pneumatic transit system in New York City. 
It ran for one block under Broadway and lasted one year before closing. But the idea didn't die. So what took us so long to try again? A legal term called rights of way. The key challenges that, that are gonna be required is to think differently about rights of way. The routes that we need to gain access to. We need to think differently about whether or not we can tunnel into the center of our cities, whether we can use existing right of ways, whether they're roads or rail lines or the LA River, for example. Hyperloop One has made amazing progress so far, but it wasn't the first to jump on Musk's idea. Across town in Culver City, another company got a jump start on the competition. It's called Hyperloop Transportation Technologies, or HTT. Legend has it, Howard Hughes built parts of the Spruce Goose in this Quonset hut. HTT hopes to make history here again. Dirk Alborn is the CEO. He was immediately drawn to Musk's Hyperloop concept. When we started out, a lot of people said, this is not doable. But Dirk thought differently, so he reached out to scientists and engineers. We got a team of around 100 engineers that said, we looked at this, in our opinion, it's doable, let's work on it. I think that was for me the moment where I think, I think this is actually, this can be done. HTT has the same goal as Hyperloop One, but its approach is very different. It's organized more like a co-op than a startup, entirely crowdsourced. Engineers, designers, and transportation experts signed up to work, but they don't get paid. If HTT succeeds, they'll get stock options. Right now, we're more than 520 people, plus 40 companies all around the world. Everybody's working in exchange for participation in the company. Instead of building a test track, HTT decided to build a working five-mile hyperloop. Halfway between LA and San Francisco lies Quay Valley. It's here where developers plan to build a solar-powered, self-sustaining city with a hyperloop. We are now building the first full-scale passenger track. Five miles long, the top speed will be about 200 miles an hour. They say it's a start. At the beginning, it's a research and development center, of course, where people can come and try out. And once Quay Valley is built out, um, we'll use it as a local transport system. HTT built several mock-ups of the pods to get a sense of size. When I sat in one, Hyperloop starts to feel real. Will the seats be more reclined? Because uh, I going 750 miles an hour, I feel like I kind of want to lean back. <laughs> I mean, as you can see, I'm not, I'm not tiny. I'll make sure that the seats are very comfortable. So there will be leg room, but no windows. That might make some people uncomfortable. You're already you're inside the tube, it's closed, so there's a lot of psychology elements that, um, that play into that. As for acceleration, it will feel like you're taking off in a plane. Back at Hyperloop One, engineers are studying the results of their electric motor test and hopes are high. What point did you decide this is absolutely possible. The engineering work we did at the end of 2014 said, hey, this is gonna work. The architecture makes sense. So we tested levitation. We tested the aerodynamics in a low pressure environment. Then we began to design the propulsion system. We've tested that now at full scale. By the end of 2016, the end of this year, we'll have demonstrated Hyperloop operating with all of its components. We'll have showed the world, this isn't a pipe dream, this is actually reality. Hyperloop One designers say this technology could be ready to go by 2020. We're only just talking a few years away. Do you actually believe that that's possible? Probably going to be cargo first. Probably going to be a route that's not 300 miles, but maybe 50. And if we can get cargo off the road, that alone would be a huge win. So how does Hyperloop stack up against California's high-speed rail? After all, we approved part of the money for that project eight years ago, and they've already broken ground. Rob believes the two can work together. I actually think Hyperloop would be the best way to get from the termination of that high-speed rail into the center of the cities. If I wanted to go all the way around the Bay Area, San Jose up to San Francisco and back, how long would that take in a Hyperloop? So we're looking at connecting those cities point to point. You can make the full loop in 15 minutes. Wow. With Hyperloop, there are no stops, no congestion. A far cry from today. Traveling sucks. Traveling is a bad experience. What we have today isn't working, and what we have today is getting worse. You know, it doesn't have to be like that. We just want to go to the destination. Hyperloop makes that possible. Traveling near the speed of sound may sound like science fiction, but if the hype is true, 
Hyperloop may be closer to reality than you think.